Let me tell you a story. It's a tale that's told to every school child in Wales. Now, legend has it that a huge fire-breathing dragon lives in an isolated cave in the highest mountains in Wales. It emerges only when Wales is under threat. Out it comes. It smites its enemy, sends them scattering to all four corners of the globe, and then returns to its lair but it's always ready to return when it's needed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hold on tight to your cups of tea because the Welsh dragon is back. Have a look at this. Okay, maybe it's not the fire-breathing dragon of old. It is a sand lizard, Wales's rarest reptile. And this photograph was taken by Pete Hill at Unislas Dunes over on the west coast, not too far away from where I am here now. So what happened to the sand lizard? Well, they used to be far more widespread than they are now, but because of habitat loss, habitat degradation, by the late 1960s, they were extinct in Wales. Indeed, they declined throughout the UK, and at one time, they survived in only three tiny pockets in England. Two areas of lowland heath in the south and one area of coastal dune up in Lancashire. Well, this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the start of a sand lizard reintroduction scheme here in Wales. And if I'm looking rather smug, well, that's because I played a very, very small part in that reintroduction scheme. Let's go back to 2006 and I was privileged enough to be invited by a group of scientists and sand lizard experts to release these birds back to Tawin Burrows on the west coast. Look at me, I look like a 12 year old, I had a full head of hair then. Now in total, 1,265 sand lizards were released at five coastal sand dune sites in North Wales. Where are those sites? Well, walk over with me and I'll show them to you on this map here. The first release was over here, Morva Harlech on the west coast. That was in 1995. That was followed in 2003 by Gronant Dunes. Then the next year, the adjacent site, Talacre Warren there. Then back here, to the Tawin Burrows, where I was briefly involved in 2006. And finally, just the other side of the Dovey Estuary, Unis Last Dunes there in 2009. And I'm delighted to be able to tell you that it's gone very well indeed. They have found evidence of breeding, successful breeding at all five sites. And I must say, I'm delighted, partly because it's brought a little bit of color back to Wales, but also partly because they brought with them some incredible behavior. Now, when these creatures first emerge in spring, they are quite bland looking, let's be honest about it. But there's a reason for this. They need to blend into the background. They need to be camouflaged because they're exothermic, they're cold-blooded, they need to warm up. So they've got to go out into the open and there they're susceptible to being predated by birds like kestrels, by buzzards and by corvids. But in late April and May, a huge transformation takes place in the males. The flanks become beautiful green colour and these are then called badges. Now, why is this? Well, some research has been carried out in Sweden and what they've discovered is that the males fight in spring. Now, usually it's just posturing. It's just a standoff. They'll show their flanks to each other like this. They'll bob up and down. They'll try and make themselves look as big as they possibly can. And one of the rivals will then scurry away into the undergrowth. And the winner is the one with the biggest badge, the brightest, boldest stripe down its flanks. But what happens when two equal rivals come together? Well, again, they'll posture for a while, maybe 15 minutes or more. And if one doesn't yield, they start fighting with a vengeance. They throw themselves at each other like mini Komodo dragons until eventually there is a winner.
Now, what of the females while well, all this is going on? Well, they still look pretty drab. Let's be honest about it. They still look pretty camouflaged. They don't turn green like the males do. But what are they looking for? Well, they are actually looking for the males with the biggest badges, with the biggest greenest flanks. Why? Well, because those males have the better genes and they produce more viable offspring than their lesser rivals. So once again in nature, we see so much effort going in to ensure that they pass their genes on to the next generation. And if you are a sand lizard, the bigger, the more colorful, the better. And I, for one, am delighted to see these wonderful creatures back in Wales where they belong.